Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and we're gonna talk about how I am integrating new chickens into my flock. So we have our new chickens here in the little Avituvin coop that's here on your right. I have three Java hens. You can see the video on them here. And I'm jumping right into the content because I have a noise competition going on over here. So I'm gonna talk about the different steps that I do when I'm bringing new chickens into the flock. Now you can see other suggestions here in regards to when you're thinking about integrating new birds, some things to keep in mind. But this video is gonna be a couple of different segments showing you sort of the steps. So really for me, integrating new chickens takes a good couple of weeks once you bring the chickens home for me. And this is for the health and the safety of not only the new guys, but also the old guys that you are adding in with. So the first step I actually don't have a video of because I didn't feel it was necessary, but I will keep the new chickens quarantined in a quarantine or isolation pen at least 20 feet away from the rest of my flock for at least a week. And that's so if there is any kind of parasite, illness, worm, respiratory infection, anything like that, I'm able to see it on this flock with me having them home before we get everybody else infected. So for me and for my yard, as I pan over back behind that shed, there is a gap that's up against a fence so predators can't get in there. That's where these girls were in this coop for over a week. You can do that as long as two weeks, but this was a neighborhood person. I saw her whole flock. Um, I met her personally. I saw her set up, so I felt confident that a week would be fine. So the next step is the one that I'm showing you right now, and it's the new chickens. <laughs> they wag their little tails. The new chickens are within the run of the old chickens. Oh, and they're fighting with each other, but they are still separate. So nobody can get at each other. Old chickens and new chickens can't fight. There's no competition for food or water, or we're playing keep away or any of that kind of stuff. This is so everybody can start seeing each other. They can start hearing each other. And I'll tell you, to be honest, while I'm integrating new chickens, not only am I getting them used to where they're going to be living, obviously, right? And their roommates and the rest of their flock, but I want them getting used to me as well because once I let these girls out in the next few days and they're actually out with the rest of the flock, I don't want that to be where they start getting to know me. Does that make sense? I want them to already know me. And you can watch my video here that talks about how to establish yourself as the rooster. <laughs> and this can work whether you have a rooster in your flock or if you just have hens. I just have hens, so I am the rooster. And these girls already know when I do my little rooster call that they come running and they come looking for me. So they already know by the time I let them out, they already know that I am the bringer of good things, that I am their protector, I'm taking care of them. They don't need to be afraid of me. So that will be nice as well. So this process, this is step two, right? So step one was you keep them isolated, you keep them away so that we know that there's no spread of disease. During that time, I also banded these girls and I'll do a separate video about um, why you may want to have little leg bands on your chickens. I also clipped their wings. I did a medical check on them. I dewormed them for the first round, the second round I'm doing tomorrow. And I also put Denigard in their water, which is a preventative against respiratory illness. So while they were over there, we just want to knock out any possibility of any kind of worms, parasites, illness, just any nasty stuff. As a fun bonus in my situation, we're in the middle of a change of seasons right now. It's starting to get a lot colder in South Texas. That's when you're going to have a lot more health problems showing up. It's that change of season. So it's going into winter and then it's going into summer. So I wanted to make sure that everybody is got their medication and they've been dewormed and all of that stuff. So step two is what I'm doing now. Everybody can see each other, hear each other. You'll see a clip here in just a second where I feed them snacks right next to each other. So their heads are right next to each other. I'm starting to teach these girls that I am the rooster. I'm not anybody to fear. I'm a good guy. I'm the bringer of good things, right? And this process can last as long as you want. I'm making this process, step two, last at least a week as well because I'm adding three new chickens to five old chickens. So the numbers are, are pretty good, but remember, when you're re-establishing pecking order, when you're adding in new factors, it's like you've been playing a card game and now you need to shuffle more cards into the deck. There's gonna be a little bit of awkwardness and re-establishing and sorting out and all of that stuff, right girlies? Tick, 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 tick. Come on girls, tick, 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 tick. 
Come on. <laughs> um, so this process is going to last a week to two weeks. So really integrating new chickens, if you have the time and you have the space, it should take probably close to a month, which is nuts. And I know we don't always have the resources and the time. And I know it's, it's a, an extra pain because you're doing double or triple the work. But for me, just to be sure that I don't end up with a dead chicken, or I don't end up with a dead flock because surprise, everybody had a respiratory illness or something like that. If it's possible, I want you to do it nice and slowly like this. So you'll see a clip here in just a second of how I start getting the girls really used to each other. And it's basically, they're gonna be eating snacks right on either side of that fence. Step three, if you can do it, is start giving the new chickens some time out in the run. So for us, that would be really when my fab five over here everybody minus callie right because she's still in quarantine these girls are still locked up and i let these guys out to kind of play out out here in the run by themselves the other thing you can do if that's not possible if you're like man i let these guys out and it's going to be impossible to catch them is just letting them out like an hour before dusk because instinctively they're naturally going to want to go up to roost anyway does that make sense so instead of you having to corral the new ones and put them back again you just let them out for a little while and then instinctively they're gonna to wanna to go up to bed on their own and then you don't have to catch them, just leave the door open. So that's what we're gonna be doing over the weekend is letting everybody out together, but just for a limited time, just for a little bit, like think of it as little field trips or like little play dates, okay? When you integrate your chickens and you're like, all right, this is it, now everybody's gonna be all together forever and ever, I'm not separating anymore, I suggest you do two more things. Number one, I suggest you try to put everybody together at night when they're up and roosting and you literally pick up new chicken off a roost bloop, and you come put it in with the old chickens bloop, and you do that with the new chickens. Once chickens are asleep, they're really out of it. That's why I always do all of my medical checks, deworming, all of that kinds of stuff with sleeping chickens because they're super lazy. They're out of it. They're, they just kind of flop around. It's a lot easier. Right, girlies? The other thing is I would keep, once you've got everybody is all in the same flock and there's no separation, there's no quarantine, everybody's just out 24 seven. The other thing I would recommend is that you keep extra food and water stations out and maybe even keep the quarantine pen. Like this coop is gonna be left with all of its doors open all day so that if these girls are like, I don't know where the nesting boxes are yet, or I'm gonna come and get this water, or I'm kind of being bullied and this is my safe space. That way everybody's out together, but this building and this drinker and water and food and all of that stuff it's all still out so you've got multiple stations does that make sense that way you don't have one bully chicken who's playing like king of the rock and guarding the food and water and the new guys can't get anything so multiple food and water stations leave the isolation coop or pen around and just leave it open so that these guys can come and have a place to kind of go back to if they need to and then be adding them into the rest of the flock at night so this is step two right now like i said step three is when we're doing the field trips and then integrating everybody so here's the clip and then we'll go on to step three and getting them in with the rest of the flock. So you're gonna see my incredibly technical process here. Here's the treat can and they're all like, lady, what are you doing? Here are the new girls, tick, 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 tick. So while the integration is a slow process, and it's partly to make sure that nobody has diseases, nobody's bringing parasites over, you know, there's nothing hidden that we didn't know at first glance. Also, I want them to start getting used to each other. Tick, 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 tick. And also, also learning that I am the bringer of good things. So see, this is what I'm talking about where, and I need to get that glass out of there. They got leftover spaghetti, but I'm putting the the black oil sunflower seeds. I did this with Grubter yesterday. Sorry, girls. But I'm putting everything right here along the border of the quarantine pen. So the new girls and the old girls, basically they have their faces all down there right next to each other. Now everybody's protected. Nobody can get at each other or, you know, like a rooster couldn't go at them with spurs or anything like that. Everybody's still protected. But I mean, you can see literally their faces are like two inches from each other. So this is the best way that I do as far as like their behavior and their social hierarchy getting established in advance. Tick, 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 tick. I know, I know, I'm so mean is I give them treats, but I give the treats to everybody, but I do it right here on either side of the fence so that old chickens and new chickens 
literally have their faces right next to each other. And it's crazy. Within two days of the new girls being in this little quarantine coop, within two days, they were coming out and coming down to me when I called them. So they already know that I am the bringer of good things, which is good, right? Like, I don't want anybody to be afraid of me. I don't want anybody to, to like freak out when I come in here. But now they've learned when they hear me do my little chick, 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 which is like my call, the equivalent of like the rooster calling them over like, guys, look, I just found something good. They are coming to me and see, you can see that Lacey and a couple of the new girls, they're, they're kind of sizing each other up, but there's nothing like we're not getting all fluffed up and all aggravated or anything like that. There's plenty of food for everybody. Everybody's got clean water. Tick, 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 tick. But that's what I do is I'll line treats up right here so that everybody's just got their face right next to each other. Right, Granny? And then we'll start doing little field trips where these girls get to come out on their own here in the next few days. All right, guys. So we've had these girlies for weeks now. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. That's Minerva. So I'm going to introduce them to you. And what we're going to do is this worked out perfectly. The old girls are just now starting to come back out because it was raining. Come on, tick, tick, ticks. So I don't know how this is gonna go, but what we're gonna do is start letting the new girls out. You ready, huh? You ready? I had this bungee corded, so we're gonna release that. And it's raining, so I'm hoping there's not gonna be anybody who's out being aggressive. We got some fresh pumpkin over here. All of the colors in the chicken run. Come on, girlies. Tick, 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 tick. Come on, girls. Tick, 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 tick. Come on. Tick, 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 tick. And remember, there's going to be some establishing of where these new girls shuffle into the flock. They've got to learn who the alpha is. They've got to kind of figure out where they belong. But we are three against five. So here comes Grace, my Bard Rock, and Lacey, which is interesting because these two girls here and here, those are one and two in the pecking order right now. But see, everyone's just kind of sizing each other up. I apologize, there's noise and it is starting to rain, so we'll see how much I can film. But there's plenty for everybody. This station, this whole coop, which has its own nesting boxes, its own shelter from the rain, its own food and its own water, that's gonna stay open all day. And then there's that coop and then there's a playhouse. Woo, girls! <laughs> it's windy and it's leafy. So everybody's kind of checking each other out, but there's not a sense of panic. There's not a sense of life and death. Somebody's about ready to get um, you know, pecked to death or anything like that. Come on, girls. Tick, 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 tick. And the new girls, I don't know how well you can see because they're all moving, but two of them have leg bands on. I'm going to do a video this week. Um, so beginning of December 2021 about why you might want leg bands. Certainly is not necessary. I've had chickens almost five years and this is the first time I'm doing it. But there are some reasons why you may want to do it, especially when you're getting new chickens. Tick, 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 tick. Hi, Granny. But our three Java hens that are right here in front of you, the kids and I named them Minerva McGonagall. She's the one who's mostly white. So she's this one right here and she's got a green band. So we're going to call her Minerva or Minnie. Then there's a blue banded chicken whose name is Mavis Dracula because we love, that's right here. Her name's Mavis because we love Hotel Transylvania. And then the third one is just going to be the one who doesn't have a band. It's okay, Lace. Tick, 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 tick. The third one's name is Roz from, um, there's a couple of chicken, not chicken. <laughs> there's a couple of children's chapter books by the author's name is Peter Brown. The books are called The Wild Robot and then The Wild Robot Escapes. And the robot's name is Roz or Rosam Unit 7134. So Roz is our third. And personality wise, Minerva's really cool. She's really chill. She's the one who's mostly white. Minnie's really cool. Rosam, who's the one right over here, is the one. She's the most spastic, the most afraid. It's okay, Lace. And then Mavis is also very curious, very assertive. So everybody's literally sizing each other up. They'll literally stand up and eyeball each other, kind of like when you see somebody cute at the food court and you're like, are you cuter than I am? I don't know. And you kind of check each other out. So they are literally sizing each other up. If a chicken feels like I'm pretty much the same size as that guy, or you know, we're we're not too far apart, then there's definitely a possibility that we're gonna try to, you know, like I could potentially fight you like Mortal Kombat style. I could vie for your spot. But if they kind of eyeball each other, they're kind of they're literally standing next to each other or across from each other, and they're starting to kind of be like, mm, no, you're way bigger than I am, or eh, I'm way bigger than you. Then it's kind of like, nah, I'm not gonna bother. So they literally are gonna. <laughs> It's okay, girlies. 
what's making them run is actually the rustling, the dramatic winter, <laughs> the rustling of all these trees that are like dumping leaves everywhere. Tick, 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 tick. But these girls are going to have a great life. We're hoping this winter or this spring to build a bigger A-frame type playhouse space. They've got all of these trees. Look at this. It's like a little chicken wonderland. And they've built, they've made like little tunnels, like game paths in between all of the plants. But it's interesting to see like they kind of get next to each other and they kind of like check each other out. Like, should I try to fight with you? Are you cool? Are you going to be higher than me in the pecking order? But there is going to be that quick, like just the one peck, like long enough to literally say like, hey, right? That's normal. I can't stop that. That needs to happen for this flock to relax. Chick, 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 chick. I'm going to throw some treats here in a minute too. My chickens are afraid of pumpkin <laughs> for the first little while. So the pumpkin's going to have to sit out here for a little bit until they realize that the pumpkin's not hunting them and then they'll come eat it. Chick, 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 chick. Aren't they beautiful all together? Oh, so sweet. And then what's interesting is, and I'm going to move around in just a second. The girls that are hiding in the coop right there, those are the ones that are on the bottom of the pecking order. Now, it may be because of the rain and the wind. Like, you know, there's only so much that I can control in this situation. But those are the girls on the bottom of the pecking order, which coincidentally are my three Easter eggers or my three brown hens. I'm going to be out here winterizing pretty soon, which for Texas, I, there's a lot that I don't do. You can see my video here if you're interested, but it's sort of a misnomer. The only thing I worry about with freezing temperatures while we're here and just talking about random things, in South Texas, the only thing I worry about in regards to winter is making sure that their water doesn't freeze and making sure that the chickens just have a space that's covered. That's it. So now that I've got eight chickens, I have to make sure there's enough room for eight chickens to be covered somewhere at the same time. Blue is the one closest to y'all. I know it's hard to see because of the grid of the hardware cloth, but blue is my beautiful old girl with her gray beard. She looks so noble and regal and wise, um, but blue is going blind. So, and then I've got Calypso who we're going to integrate in the next couple of days. Um, you know, Calypso was attacked by an animal almost three weeks ago. And then we had, um, we helped catch a stray cat who was going blind and we were nursing a stray cat all weekend. Um, and that cat has gone to a shelter. So it's just been really busy. But look at these beautiful girls. So I'm going to be around. I'm going to be doing some yard work to where I can hear. There's going to be the quick pecks. That's unavoidable. That needs to happen so that everybody can kind of just figure out where they belong. Um, going up to roost tonight, the new girls, I've got to make sure they know where to go. And they can. I can let them go back into that coop and roost back in the new coop. But within the next two or three days, I'm going to make sure they all know to go in here to our main coop. So anyway, that's enough talking here, but I will be giving you another update pretty soon. But those are the steps on how I integrate chickens. And I will be keeping my ears open for the next few days, making sure nobody's getting bloody. The normal pecs is going to happen. You cannot stop it. Don't try. Okay, don't fight evolution. Let them figure out where everybody belongs. But now the only things that I'm worried about is making sure nobody gets bullied and then making sure that everybody knows where they need to go up to sleep so that they can be locked up and nice and safe at night.